What's up everyone? It's Jordan busy here in the lab. Tonight we're working on our scale, scale science garage. Check it out. So I made the whole front removable so you can get in and take those really good up close and personal scale photos. You should have a full backdrop no matter which way you want to turn the car. You'll have a full wall behind you with your accessories and everything else you want to hide inside. Thinking a two post lift on the right, maybe uh, some tools or a dyno, something else over on this other side. Got some ideas I'll play around with. Up on the top, we're going to keep the loft, maybe with a little ladder staircase and then a crane off the ceiling so you can hoist stuff up there, storage, etc. Keep it realistic. Leave a comment down below. You think I should do a spiral staircase or a ladder? Make it difficult. <laughs> we got this roof all framed, nice and sturdy. Floor to ceiling, we're at 23 and a half inches, which I did so I could use full sheets of foam core. Now, car only stands about five and a quarter inches. So we have a good amount of room to move cars up on lifts, get through garage doors, etc. Now we countersunk some magnets into the frame of the front of the building. We also did the same on the top frame of the building. Ideally, the front will find where it wants to go. And then I used the shim to keep a slight gap on the bottom of it. So you should be able to just kind of slide it in easily. Nothing should break or snap or crack. Fingers crossed. Oh, no. <laughs> I was worried that was going to happen. It's officially too small. We're going to have to let the air out of the tires. Whew. Luckily, the small, tired crawler fits like a glove. True to scale fashion, the mall crawler fits in the garage. But the purpose-built rig will end up living outside. That'll pretty much wrap up framing out this garage. Uh, from here, we got to plan the next steps, which will be skinning it and painting it. So I'm thinking about using foam core around the exterior, and then I'm torn. Do I leave these girders exposed on the inside, make it look like a steel structured building? Or do I finish them out? Do I make it look like brick wall? Comment below with your thoughts. I also need to address lighting. I'm planning to do some scale lighting and possibly leaving like a porthole for a big light like you see in the video uh, to make taking photos a little easier. We'll see what we end up coming up with though. Other than these pin nails and the lovely pin nail I took through the end of my finger, this project is a freebie. Oh yeah, I also bought some glue. Don't judge. I promise I won't sniff any. More. Check out this little snippet as I was building the garage out. Having a lot of fun getting to use my new table saw. This thing is bad ass.
that will unfortunately bring us to the point where free material is no longer an option. So this will be our first round of purchases. Headed out to Lowe's today in search of some paint. And in true scale science form, I went directly to the discount rack. I scanned this and it was $16.50, marked down to $2.50. I didn't know that Lowe's had a discount shelf, so keep that in mind if you're ever trying to complete some scale projects and you need some paint to cover some square footage on the cheap. This gray looks like it should cover this floor perfectly and look nice and scale. I couldn't find a color that I could roll on, so I opted for spray paint. This Satin Cabernet from Rust-Oleum. <laughs> Man, what a name. Should be a rich red to look kind of brick or iron work like. I know Krylon had an actual brick red, but this guy was about 50 cents cheaper, bringing this can to about 348. I'm trying to keep my total budget for this garage at or under $100 for the rough shell, not including scale accessories. And as far as materials are concerned, including today's purchase, we're right at the $50 mark. Now that I'm looking, I'm really questioning, should I finish the inside wall or should I leave it exposed with those red girders? Leave a comment below with what you think. Our last purchase was this cool touch-up roller. It's smaller than really anything I've ever used. It's about the size of my thumb. Should fit into these tight spots all around the girders. Keep in mind that the front of this will come off. So if I do leave those walls exposed, I'll paint the red first, then I'll mask the girders off, and I'll paint the gray floor with the roller. That way I can kind of be sloppy with the red paint, and then I'll cut the gray back against it nice and clean. That's if I leave the walls exposed. What to do, what to do. Lastly, shout out to the real MVP in the garage this last week and a half. This is my big buddy heater from Mr. Heater. This bad boy throws out some serious, serious heat. I just converted it from the baby one pound tanks that cost anywhere from two to four dollars a piece to the full size 15 pound tank. 15 pound tank was a whopping 14.50. So four dollars for a pound. 1450 for 15 pounds. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Heater. Thank you guys. Keeping the scale projects happening. If you know of any scale garage accessories that I must have, any STL files, 3D prints, anything I could make, leave a comment below with links or anything else you can provide. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you tonight live on the Scale Science Podcast. Signing off. Peace.